Josh Giddy and the Oklahoma City Thunder are facing a very banged up Lakers squad. No LeBron, no D'Angelo Russell. You knew that, but also no Anthony Davis. He was a last minute scratch. The Thunder are still without SGA, but as you saw, Jalen Williams is balling. He knocks in the three. Not to be outdone by Lakers newcomer Malik Beasley. Knocking out a couple of them things. It's Los Angeles out to an eight-point lead. Second quarter, put-back jam from Jalen Williams. He plays the game with such a pure joy. Just feels so genuine, his energy, and what he brings to the game of basketball. He's got the thunder tied up here in a second. Lou Dort trying to overcompensate from some of that production loss with their star, SGA, out of the lineup. Lou Dort getting to the rim and coming away with a couple buckets. Josh Giddy is going to put the thunder up with that and one. They let it as we took a break. Lakers looking to find their way down a lot of star power. It's Jared Vanderbilt inside to Mo. Bamba Giddy could care less about my song. Josh with another score. Lonnie Walker fell out of that Lakers rotation following the deadline. Now he's back in and they need him. He knocks in the three. But for Los Angeles, the guy that they really relied on in this game was none other than Dennis Schroeder. How about his return to LA? It's been a good one. He had 26 points. Defense leading the offense. Reward the big fella for his efforts. It's Rui Achimori with the block. He ran the floor, and he got the throwdown. Giddy, 22 points, 11 assists, and nine rebounds. It's his play that helped bring the Thunder back late. Look at that, deuce. OKC's down just four. Could they somehow, someway come back to win this game? Austin Reeves says no. Enough is enough. Reeves with the reverse, reverse at the rim, and it's the Lakers. Oh, man, it's the Lakers. Winning on the road shorthandedly, 123 to 117. LeBron James now knows the next steps in his recovery from injury. According to Chris Haynes and Adrian Wojnarowski, LeBron James is dealing with an injury in his right tendon. It will not require surgery. LeBron James will be re-evaluated in three weeks' time. What does that mean for the Los Angeles Lakers? We still don't know exactly what it means for the rest of this season. The Lakers know they'll be without LeBron James for at least three more weeks. That's about 10 games. All right, so there's about 20 games left in the season for the Lakers. LeBron will be reevaluated in 10 games. My guess, once he's reevaluated, assuming everything goes correctly, at that time, LeBron can start, maybe start the process of working himself back into the, you know, the game of basketball and on the court. I don't think that means Laker Nation to be excited or think LeBron James is going to make the court in three weeks' time. I, I, I wouldn't think LeBron and James would be ready to go in three weeks' time. What I do believe it means is, if the Lakers can, which you're asking a lot. I mean, Anthony Davis is, is, is fickle. As great as he can be, he's very fickle. They're without D'Angelo Russell, who's probably going to come back Sunday, maybe from a sprained ankle himself. You, you would need the Lakers probably to make the play-in tournament. And at that point in time, maybe just maybe LeBron James could gear up to be ready for the play-in game. And if the Lakers are able to win and make it to the postseason as a 7 or 8 seed, at that point in time, maybe just maybe you have LeBron James for a run. The Lakers are in a weird position, right? Because they got to ask themselves, do we risk a long-term injury to LeBron if we bring him back this year? He's clearly in a lot of pain, can't even keep shoes on when he's out of games right now. He's walking on a crutch right now. He's walking around Memphis with, with a darn crutch on. Again, you know, trying to watch his team get a win over the Grizzlies. The, the reality is, if you're the Lakers, though, you made the moves at the deadline that Laker Nation had been asking you to do. You put the right pieces around LeBron James and Anthony Davis. I guess the question is now, if you're the Lakers organization, when are we going to get a run at this thing, LeBron and AD? Every year there's something. And I think Laker Nation would rather there be an injury concern to LeBron than Anthony Davis. Again, AD missed 
The the game against the Thunder yesterday, due to a precaution on his knee, but I think you'd rather there be more of an injury concern with LeBron because you know his will and one and and his chase of that ghost from Chicago, you know he's going to try his best to get out on the court. You don't really know that about Anthony Davis. You don't know where his desires, wills, and wants are at at this point in his career with all the injuries that he's suffered so far. I think if you're a Laker Nation, you want it to be LeBron over AD if you got to choose. And if you're like you're that Lakers organization, you definitely have the right to think, yo, who? why would we rest LeBron? If, if he say he can go, why wouldn't we play him? Because who's to say next year we won't be dealing with the same injury concerns? This is not like we're talking about a Giannis or Drew Holiday. We're talking about two guys that at this point in their careers, they're injured every year. And by the way, LeBron's 38. He should be. Anthony Davis is 29, though. That's the big one where you're like, mm, how are you dealing with injuries that a 38-year-old is just now starting to get? So that, that if you're Laker, that Lakers organization, you're like, wait, what are we resting them for? Like, if once he's ready to go, if and when three to four weeks he's ready to go, I believe that Lakers organization got to ask LeBron, yo, you, yo, you, you think you can go ahead and do this? Because there's no guarantee next year LeBron and AD will be able to make it through a season again. They said they were going to do that this year. And they still got hurt, even though they both missed time in the season.